Hello, my name is Philip Lewis. I'm at the Engarati studio to interview Marina Lombardi about the advanced FP7 project. And the advanced project is a, is a project including 10 member yeah. organizations. The companies are RWE, NL, Iberdrola, ERDF, TNO, TNS, Entelios, Camillas, Theme, and Vasa ETT. Yeah. Thank I'd you. just like to, uh, to ask you over these uh, two years of this advanced project, this EU funded project, it's been a, I suppose, a very intensive project. Right. Um, could you just explain, first of all, the, the, the broad nature of this project and, and what the objectives were behind it? Sure, thanks. So, yeah, this project was uh, designed in order to study uh, some uh, pilot projects uh, on active demand in Europe. Uh, and the, this was done with the aim to really understand what can uh, be the sus key success factors behind active demand programs. Uh, when I talk about active demand, I mean uh, some programs referred to energy efficiency, so programs where customers uh, get more information regarding their energy consumption and based on this information they can be more aware and so empowered to make some changes in their behavior regarding to electricity consumption. And the other kind of program is demand response programs where customers uh, are, uh, get also some uh, price uh, or volume signals refer to electricity and then they uh, change their demands in a flexible way. So we uh, had uh, four case studies in Europe uh, running energy efficiency and demand response programs and the idea was to uh, study these pilots and compare them and assess uh, them against some uh, key performance indicator in order to understand really what works most uh, what's, uh, what are the best practices, what is uh, really not to be done, <laughs> and also to build, uh, so to build an actionable framework uh, for, um, uh, for the others wanting to enter into these uh, kind of programs and really uh, to pass from pilot stage to rollout phase. So this was more than just uh, an analysis of, of what's been learned so far, it's also, it also includes uh, a uh, component of communication and a yeah. component of, of the actions that we need to take to go forwards in the future. So it's a, a practical application of, of the findings. I yes, suppose. yes, yes. And yeah, it, it, it really matters to communi with the, also with communications yes. uh, because we found that it's really a key factor uh, to have success in these kind of programs. Thinking of these success factors, what would you say were the most interesting or, or most surprising findings that, that you have observed from the advanced project? Mm. Uh, one of the key findings uh, that, uh, that I knew uh, a bit, uh, but now uh, I know better, is that uh, education is uh, really, really important, it's critical. That uh, li really, uh, in order to uh, empower customer, you really uh, have to invest a lot in educating, and so to, in designing uh, proper uh, campaigns, and uh, informative tools uh, in order to explain them uh, what's uh, behind these programs, what they can get, what they can do, uh, how they can use the technology you provide if you provide them some technology. Uh, education is key. Because and in terms of that education, is it important that, that that education happens before you then roll out these programs or these projects? Because very often projects and programs and what utilities are doing in the industry is to roll out smart meters and to roll out solutions and then convince the customers. Do you feel that it no, should no. be done before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's something you have to plan in advance, well in advance when you know that you want to run uh, this kind of project pro programs and you have to, you need experts. Yes. Experts in this kind of field and you have to design with them uh, the proper campaign. Now, when you are educating those customers, do they, are they then prepared to just fall into that and take that offer or do you then have to take them through a journey? Is there a necessity to take them through that journey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, also this was yes. confirmed by in our research that um, it's really a journey. So you start because consumers, uh, most consumers uh, are really uh, lacking uh, 
information regarding uh, how to change their behavior, why to change their behavior, no? So it's very important that you start with, the, uh, for example, with the energy efficiency programs uh, by providing them information uh, in order then to, let, to introduce them to the to this kind of uh, topic, to, under to let them understand well how, who are the players, for example. And then, um, step by step, you can pro uh, propose them more advanced programs, for example, also demand response programs. And we really found that uh, if at the beginning maybe customers were a little bit skeptical, even to receive just a no in a known display, just providing feedback and not doing anything, after a while, they really uh, ask for something more. They really ask, okay, now I understand, but now I'd like uh, you to give me uh, automation uh, so that I, I know I can control my devices and really uh, have uh, change in my, become flexible and really change my uh, demand curve. So it's a step-by-step -step approach yeah. that we need to take these customers through. And do you, therefore, because it's an argument in the industry that, well, if you want to control demand, if you want flexibility, just automate it, mm. just impose it. What do you think about that? Do you mm. think automation <laughs> would work or not? What does this tell us from the advanced project about that? Uh, uh, automation uh, is uh, something that can help because uh, customers, uh, you know, maybe you are not always at home, uh, you don't want to be bothered uh, any time to switch on and switch off some device. So automation can be something that helps. But uh, it must be understood by customers. So again, education. You have to really ensure that they understand what's happening, what is the possibility, what uh, automation is doing for them, so that they are engaged. Because otherwise you lose them. Uh, something we noticed uh, analyzing these experiences is that sometimes as, uh, uh, automation uh, then is something that, uh, you know, customers then uh, get uh, outside of, uh, of the, the program itself because, uh, okay, they're doing, yes. I don't know exactly what, but so you yeah. have to ensure that they kept, uh, kept uh, they, they remain engaged, no? Now there was a big survey as part of this project as well. There was a survey of, of thousands of customers in, in, in multiple countries around Europe. Um, did you, were there sort of key findings also from those surveys, both interviews and questionnaire surveys? Yeah, yeah, because actually we went back to the customers in this pilot and we interviewed some of them in order to understand from their experience. And then we run this uh, survey over uh, citizens in Europe. So maybe even uh, people never having heard uh, the word active demand. Uh, so yes, what we found is uh, basically uh, the importance of um, uh, more education, we understood how to uh, segment uh, these customers and this will help us uh, because we are currently designing uh, communication uh, umbrellas that is the way to properly communicate to the different targets of consumers so we could, uh, we could design specific targets that are not the usual ones but really uh, based on the evidence of this uh, survey and so we are really happy of this and we will present this uh, at the end of uh, November in Rome in uh, the final workshop of Advanced. And so you feel that these will actually be tools that the industry and the stakeholders in the yeah. industry can use to try to progress AD, advanced demand in, in the market? Yes, yes, because they help you understanding how to uh, address the specific targets, Were there both any... in the residential and in commercial and industrial yes, sector. Yes, so it's residential and commercial. And, um, now, were there any other key findings that you found from this project? For example, there's a, a new capability, KPI, and, and any other findings that, that you, you think? Yeah, well, what you yes. mentioned is very important uh, for those uh, uh, working in uh, this field and wanting to measure the impact of their programs. Because we uh, started with, uh, we defined two KPIs that are quite usual. Uh, one is uh, to measure flexibility, and the other one is to measure the overall reduction of energy. Uh, and, uh, but we found that if you, if you want really to understand uh, at household level what happens, the capability of a single household to uh, uh, respond to in demand response programs and to be flexible, uh, you cannot use the standard, uh, the traditional uh, KPI regarding flexibility, uh, but you have to use a new methodology that we defined in the project that is really uh, measuring the change uh, in, uh, let's say, uh, in, the, in, in the load curve of customers, okay? 
and uh, this is a really interesting uh, KPIs that can be found or in uh, our um, report. Uh, so you these. feel that there are that our approach in the industry to flexibility has been misguided in a sense in the past or, or limited in scope. That if you yes. want to know, let's say that if you want really to under, to, have, to get insights uh, on uh, what is really motivating households yes. and what is behavioral households, uh, you need first of all you need to, uh, some specific data. So you need, for example, uh, to have uh, uh, hourly metering data yes. before and uh, and after uh, the, the program has started. No, you have to you need the capability to compare this data. And uh, then you need to uh, use, for example, a KPI that is really looking how the, con the, the load curve is changing yes. just before the intervention and after. Could, we have, could this project have been conducted without smart meters? Were smart meters fundamental to this project? Uh, yeah, yes. they, they were fundamental. They, yeah. Actually, they were fundamental because they provided us the data, uh, the data we needed to, uh, to analyze and to study these cases. And in fact, for example, uh, in the German uh, case study, uh, uh, they uh, studied the pilots and in parallel they started the smart metering rollout. So actually, before the pilot, we didn't have data from metering. And so uh, it was difficult to make this comparison between uh, the, uh, to understand how behavior changed after with what was before, because before we didn't have enough data from the meters because they were not in place. So it's very important. Now, Talking about data, there's an issue of data privacy. Now, in, at the beginning of this project, it was very important to gather a lot of data from all the, all the sub-pilots uh, in order to analyze that data to build the model and so on. Now, there were some issues, weren't there, with data, access to data in Germany in particular. Uh, can you describe that a little bit and what the issue was there? Yeah, this was really a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Because we, uh, as I told you, we wanted to uh, take all data, uh, measure uh, all the measure uh, the data collected from these pilots in terms of um, metering data, but also in terms of uh, demographics or uh, what the customers replied to the uh, to the surveys done in the pilots in order to get uh, to understand uh, their feedback. No, and uh, we discovered that uh, this uh, we had to again uh, start a new procedure uh, with customers in order to be uh, allowed to use this data because uh, you know uh, we couldn't take uh, simply uh, this data from uh, the responsible of the pilots and analyze them because we were not allowed due to privacy issues so uh, our so we we encountered some challenges in order to uh, go back to customers uh, having them informed of the, this new uh, research uh, topic and uh, have them their consent to use this data. Now this is a, a critical issue for research across Europe going forward and beyond Europe even that, that in order to try to help consumers by building offerings and, and capabilities uh, we need data of this kind in order to do the research but it's actually very difficult sometimes to get hold of that data uh, within the confines of, of data privacy, which of course is necessary but, yeah. but challenging. Do you feel that then um, trust is a key issue going forward in order to try to, to build that capability to get the, the data out? Yeah, yeah, trust is very important and um, uh, the suggestion, uh, the recommendation is yes. that when you start a program like this, you are very clear with customers and you are not uh, that uh, uh, limited in the, uh, in the final usage of this data. You explain customers that you want to use this data in order to make research, that you might use uh, this data in, uh, with the other partners for not for commercial purposes but for uh, research purposes uh, so that you are ready for the different uh, kind of analysis you want to do in the future. And also I think uh, was, uh, what, what at the end surprised us it was that we, we thought uh, we could encounter much more difficulties in getting this new consent from customers while at the end it was not that, that uh, hard. So at the end customers really appreciated it, appreciated, yes. wanted to be interviewed again, wanted to pass their the, the data. Last question really is, are we ready for AD on a mass scale, uh, on a European scale? Can we move from pilots to mass rollout? Is that going to be difficult and are we ready for it yet? <laughs> 
Okay, uh, I think we have done a lot of uh, progress in this last uh, this last year. So however, there are already still some um, some things to be done, especially in terms of the definition of the roles and responsibility, uh, in terms of the um, uh, defini the regulatory framework. Uh, so there are many actions that uh, has to be done, and in the project, what we will deliver at the end is really an actionable framework. That means. Uh, uh, we will provide uh, some, we have identified some key actions and we will provide them, uh, we'll say okay these are very important and these are very urgent, this can be done also uh, in a, let's say in short medium term and these are for the long term. So uh, I think we have still to work but for sure all these experiences have been done in order to go to roll out and to scaling up. Marina Lombardi, thank you very much for telling thank us you. about the advanced FP7 project. Thank you very much. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you.